Hello, my name is Brandon Ivy, and um, I've been thinking long and hard on whether or not I should even shoot a video like this or say anything publicly. Because there's one thing that uh, you never want to really talk about, especially when you're in my line of work, which is politics, religion, and race relations. You know, it's, 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 it's always a touchy subject because we're dealing with people from every culture, every aspect of life, even people from all over the world. And you can never please everybody. And everybody's got their own belief systems. And none of that should stop you from being able to do business with each other. And that's very, very important. But on the other hand, I also have a responsibility. A responsibility as an adult black male, as a father, as a husband, as a Morehouse man, to be able to stand up and say things that I feel need to be addressed. And one of those things was talk about is, is, is as far as what's going on in the news today with race relations in America. You know, one thing that I want people to understand is, is, is the facts and emotions of different cultures of people seeing the same exact event, but walking away with two different conclusions. How can that be? How can it be when you can see a video showing an event that takes place and one group of people comes up with one idea of uh, what happened or how they feel about it and another group comes up with something completely different it's like we're not on the same page and not understanding why and the reason that that comes down to experience personal experience group experience cultural experience see when I was in college one of my dissertations that I wrote was called interest convergence theory and I'm not going to go into that but one of the main subjects in that was talking about the different race relations between blacks and whites and how we build our societies and one of my conclusions was that blacks or African Americans have always been good at creating great leaders and movements and as good as that is, it's always been short-lived. A movement is always a flash in the pan, momentary event. And if the leader dies or fades away, the movement stops. And then the community has to wait another 20, 30 years for another leader of that stature to rise back up. The difference with whites is whites create great institutions, great systems, where it doesn't matter who is in charge whether he's white or black whether he's Latino or Asian it doesn't matter who's in charge of the system the system continues to perpetrate whatever that the system is designed to do so when you look at the United States of America the United States of, Amer of America was built on a system through Bill of Rights and amendments that has to change that system over the time and over years as our cultural and cultural understandings and society has changed. See, his system was built on racism, but not just racism, on slavery. But as slavery was abolished, new laws had to be measured to change the system. But then you had Jim Crow. You had the Jim Crow laws in the South. You had indentured servitude. You had things that kind of kept a certain systems in place that were designed to keep a group of people down and another group of people up. These are facts. So the group that's being held down is experiencing things that the group that's being protected will never experience and will never understand. Now we fast forward to today and today we're dealing with the situation where it may seem like police brutality is all over the news and I want to say this. I believe that the majority of the police are here to protect and serve not just one group of people, but everybody, society as a whole. There are great cops out there that put their lives on the line. I went to school with Tom Coleman, graduated from high school with him, and he lost his life being a police officer to protect and serve, as many people have and many officers over the decades have. So this is not an indictment on the entire police officer and police force. 
But as a black man, I also have experiences that my white counterparts have never experienced. One of those is driving while black. I've been pulled over simply because I was black. I've been questioned simply because I am black. I've been harassed simply because I was black. I have had guns, police guns, pulled on me simply because I am black. Now you can justify it so many ways, but that is a fact that remains that I have had to deal with and that my father had to train me growing up how to handle myself in circumstances where I get pulled over by the police or I get questioned, how to cooperate, where to put our hands. But I'm always faced with an issue as a friend of mine who has a PhD, who was pulled over, told to get out the car at gunpoint, and he's standing there like this. And the officer says, show me some ID. Now this is a crossing point here on what this man could have done. If he turned to run, he can get shot in the back. If he follows the police order, and puts his hand down to get his ID, he can be shot because it may seem he's reaching for a concealed weapon. If he doesn't respond, he could be rough, beat up because he did not cooperate with the police. What choice do you do? This is the choice that we have to live with. And as a father that has sons growing up, I have to teach them differently than my white counterparts with their white sons growing up when dealing with the police. We view the police differently. Not because of hate, but because of experience. So when you take Ferguson, and I'm gonna leave Ferguson alone because of the many different controversies there. But I wanna highlight how the system is designed to protect a certain group of people. Let's fast forward to New York, Eric Garner. You have video showing exactly what took place. The result of this confrontation was a man dead. That's a fact. Why and how is what everybody's debating. So I have one group of people who say, well, if he didn't resist arrest, he'd still be alive today. If he wasn't overweight, he'd be alive today. If he didn't have a heart problem and asthma, he'd be alive today. How about the fact that if he wasn't put in a chokehold, slammed to the ground, and not given medical condition, he'd be alive today. Since when has whatever crime he was being accused of been given the death sentence right there on the spot. Resisting arrest is not a death sentence. Arguing with the officers is not a death sentence. Breaking up a fight is not a death sentence. Standing on a corner is not a death sentence. Selling illegal cigarettes is not a death sentence. And when you have it on video, this is exactly why it exposes that the system is in place to protect because even the video shows exactly what went down and nobody can say that that was okay at the least it should be investigated but the system is designed that it didn't even go through indictment this should be a wake-up call to those who have never understood the plight of what African Americans have been stating for decades, going through experiences like this, it is not the officer, it is the system. I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna make sure you guys really understand what I'm saying here. It's not the police force, it is the system that allows these actions to go unpunished. This is not 
us against them. This is not police against the community. This is a system designed to hold a certain group down. This is what is not being really said on TV. And it's also a topic that's not really being discussed. But it is something that does need to change, not for African Americans, not for Latinos, but for all Americans. We are all in this together, whether you're black, white, or whatever. Injustice is injustice. The police need to be protected, and the civilians need to be protected. It's not one or the other. And until the system changes, blacks will always not view the police as a force that is here to protect and serve us. And until the system changes, whites will always still believe that blacks must be doing something wrong to aggravate the police to get to shoot them or do something to them. But it took the Eric Garner case that exposes a system that's already in place that needs to be changed. That's all that I wanted to share. Some people are going to like what I have to say. Some people are not going to like what I have to say. Can't please everybody all the time, but it's my responsibility that I felt I must say something. I can't sit on the sidelines and just watch out of fear that I may, I may uh, upset somebody that may impact my finances. Bad things happen when good people do and say absolutely nothing. I'm not one of those individuals. So thank you for watching this video. I hope I opened some eyes and enlightened some people to understand that we do have a system that needs to be changed for all of us and that actions are taken and a step is taken in that direction to help change it. My name is Brandon Ivey. Bye-bye.